All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Kim Bohr, who's up in Seattle. How are you doing, Kim? I'm doing great, John, thanks. Yeah, and Kim's the Chief Operating Officer at Waldron. And what we're going to talk to uh, talk about today is Right, we're still in the midst of this crisis. Hopefully we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel and hopefully we're starting to emerge from it. But one of the things that's going to challenge everybody, it's challenging them right now, but it's gonna challenge them even more coming out is how to lead effectively uh, your organization and yourself, to be honest, out of this uh, into whatever new reality comes uh, comes at the other end. So. Uh, so Kim, what are some of the ways that you should be, if you're a leader in an organization, what are some of the things that you should be considering now about how to lead and maybe about leadership style? Well, I think, you know, one of the most important things today is what you were doing maybe two months ago is not likely to transfer and work, right? Even mm -hmm. down to the business metrics that you're tracking, you know, what you were tracking to gauge the business two months ago is most likely completely different. And you need to be recognizing that and making that shift. Um, understanding the importance of your leadership brand is incredibly important. And the reality is that something that we, we need to be pulling on now more than ever and how we show up and how we manage through this crisis is really an indicator of that brand that we um, hold so dearly. And so, it's really about leading in this moment and recognizing that um, the level of presence we have to have has to be so much greater. The idea of how we engage and communicate needs to be more consistent and more crisp. It has to be, um, we have to be leading in this place of recognizing that we cannot, um, what we did before isn't going to get us to where we're needing to go now. Yeah, and I think that's I think that's one of the critical things because there is a natural tendency, and and it's an easy in some ways it's the easy easier path to take yeah. just to sort of convince yourself and everybody else that oh it'll return to just the way it was the status quo will be restored everything will be good and we'll just you know plow forward just like we always do, but that's not going to happen because the world ha is going to and every every traumatic event like this or cataclysmic event has some makes changes right the world evolves yeah. so your business in some way is going to evolve and i guess it's really a part of how of getting ahead of that now and, and accepting that reality it absolutely is and the, and the sooner we can accept that and recognize that this really is a transformational moment not just personally but inside our organizations inside mm -hmm. our, our business the sooner we'll be able to start thinking ahead and start thinking about what does leadership look like? What, what should we be learning? What should we be teaching? How should we be leading in ways that are, that are going to be different skills, skills we just mm -hmm. didn't realize we needed until now. Yeah. And I think here's going to be an interesting uh, phenomenon as well, uh, Kim, is that every individual who we're going through this as a collective experience, but it's also a very individual experience. Yeah. Right? And I think people are probably, or, or are doing a lot of self-reflection, looking at their lives, looking at you know their careers, looking at mm -hmm. what they're doing. And the reality for leaders is that the people who you sent home or who are at home may not come back the same people. They may have, re, you know, have, have thought through, well, maybe I don't want to do this anymore, or maybe this isn't as important, or whatever it is. So I think that's one of the things that you, as a leader, you're going to have to consider uh, is whether, the, whether you're the, the people around you, what, what, how have they evolved yeah. during this? Absolutely. I think we're, you know, the, the fact that we're experiencing something that no one could ever imagine, the fact that mm -hmm. we're having to try to operate um, with, you know, for those that are, working from home, they're operating with having to take care of elders that perhaps are sick or having to take care of children that, you know, normally they would have alternative solutions for. And, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just such a different place that I think it does become a place of reflection and a place of uh, deciding, you know, who do we want to be as a leader, you know, in, in and of ourselves, and how do we want to be engaging in this bigger, broader community that we have. And I think that we start to look at um, just some skill sets that need to be very, very different that we, and hopefully we come out of this with a lot more compassion and empathy for one another in ways that maybe we just weren't so, um, mm -hmm. so yeah. comfortable with before. 
And I think it's an interesting word. I think a concept is compassion because compassion, I think sometimes people confuse compassion with indulgence, right? It's mm -hmm. just like, um, so there, I'm very compassionate, therefore I'm going to indulge any of your behaviors, which isn't really what compassion is. Right. But, and I do agree with you. I think if people come out more com compassionate, but also looking at how we can get how we can get the best out of people to be their best and to help them be their best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so part of that's just meeting people where they are. I try to understand that people are going to give the best that they can today, but that might be that they're having to flex their hours because yeah, they have a two-year-old at home that they now have to suddenly keep occupied during what would have been a business morning, a business mm -hmm. morning, right? And so then how do they need to shift their work and how can we help them in accommodating that? Um, recognizing that none of us are in ideal situations at this point. And so what needs to happen and how do we start to then take that same compassion with us as we come out of this and recognize that uh, we don't just turn that off. And I think that's yeah. perhaps something that could be a risk for some people to feel like, okay, we're back in this physical structure now and so things have to act accordingly and I think that's going to be pretty um, difficult yeah. to accomplish. And I think the other thing is and, and this is speaking uh, as uh, we built our company and kind of six uh, six years ago we really kind of made the decision that we would be as virtual as we possibly mm -hmm. could uh, and we have largely run a virtual company as, out of strategic choice for a long time. We've had we do have some office but uh, yeah, we are largely virtual and one day we may be completely virtual, who knows. Um, but I think when you say, uh, you know, maybe today it's not an ideal situation, maybe there are some people who are discovering that actually it is an ideal situation. And maybe to, to, your, to the mm -hmm. point that you raised, maybe the person who has to entertain their two-year-old is going, well, actually, this is what I want to, I want to be able mm -hmm. to entertain my two-year-old and I still want to be able to work. So... Um, let's figure out a way to accommodate, uh, to accommodate that so then you're going to get the best out of me, but now I'm going to feel like I can do something else, that it's, that it's not a, an either or choice, that we yeah. can have the best of both worlds. And I think that's where we're going, that's where leadership is going to be really challenged, is how do you really uh, create the best environment for people to succeed in? And maybe that means non-traditional approaches to work. I completely agree. You know, I think to your point, it goes beyond just the fact, will people go back to physical yeah. you know, brick and mortar? Will they say, hey, this wasn't so bad. And then to that extension, I was talking to somebody earlier and we were talking about flexible schedules and inside their organization, they were saying that, you know, they, one individual who's a senior executive, he's working from, you know, six to nine in the morning. And then he's got a two year old, in fact, that they have to take care of and another one yeah. on the way. And so he's then parenting until one and then from one until five, he's taking on the rest of his work day. And it's, and it's that it's in response to this is what we need to do, but they're also finding that it's incredibly productive. And I agree with you. We'll see more and more of that. And we'll start to see um, this whole idea of what's really important and what do we feel yeah. like should be prioritized inside of not only our organizations, but as we bring leadership leaders up inside a company, what are the real priorities that we want to be conveying and how we get them ready? And I think that's going to really shift dramatically. Yeah, I do too. And one of the things that I noticed happened after the financial crisis, right? So uh, after the financial crisis was the kind of the first wave where people started to go, okay, maybe I have located myself in a high cost area to have a proximity to where you know the, where my company physically is and now the financial crisis i just lost my job and now i'm stuck in a high cost area with the mortgage or whatever and so people started to go i'm going to locate myself where i want to be where is best for me or my family or my mm -hmm. lifestyle and then look for a job and then mm -hmm. so that's where a lot more remote work. I think that's going to be times 100 now, because yeah. for some people, this may be the second time, you know, 2008 now in 2019, 2020, it's happened again, maybe. And, right. and people are not going. So I think businesses need to be much more um, clued in to the idea that if you're a business located up in Silicon Valley, 
you you got to start thinking is dragging people to live mm -hmm. in one of the highest cost areas the best thing to do and are you going to get the best people because quite frankly you got to weigh up if you're if you're an individual and say is this a good gamble for me yeah you know the other thing i'm curious about is how will we see entrepreneurship change you know how will mm -hmm. we see will we see people who have been extremely invested in, in entrepreneurs, whether that be from a solopreneurship or small business yeah. perspective, really start to, um, to, to decide that's not for them or will they continue forward? You know, I think the fact that we find ourselves in a situation where everything is completely shut down and where healthcare becomes a challenge, I think we'll also have people really rethinking, you know, whether um, this could be the right thing for their families or not. I think that's going to dramatically impact our economy if we start to see you know, that yeah. heart and soul of what it is from an entrepreneurship and small business start to shift um, as well. Yeah, I think that's a I think that's a great point, because, uh, yeah, I mean, if you were you if you either own a small business or you were thinking of opening a small mm -hmm. business in the future, yeah, you are going to look at times like this and ask yourself, OK, well, who's hit hardest right now? It's uh, yeah. unless you're lucky to be in a particular area. Yeah, you, it's it's small businesses. So, yeah, I think that I think that that it that is a uh, um, that's a consideration and that may be a challenge a challenge going forward so I think and I think the so the key thing about leadership because I think the leadership part it's not just leading people it's leading yourself and I think yeah. maybe coming out of this is that people need to take a greater leadership role in their own lives I completely agree and you know what starts to matter most and is it as much of the specifics inside the organization is it that um, the family obligations need to be reprioritized. You know, is it tapping into that place of, of the compassion and the empathy mm -hmm. and understanding more and finding that there's a lot of value that comes from that? And I think those are going to be really important questions that we're um, all going to be answering in yeah. some fashion. And I think, and it always surprises me, amazes me in some ways, is like how few people really ask themselves what motivates them. Yeah. And I think this is and I think this is a time when people should be taking this opportunity to say, what really motivates me? What do I really want to do? What am I really getting out of this? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, we talk about this as a, a forced time of reflection. And I think mm -hmm. um, for many, hopefully that's really a valuable yeah. opportunity to say that and to think about it. And, you know, how do we start to invent? I mean, that's the other thing that's interesting at this time is there is such a a great opportunity for invention and reinvention. Um, so what, you know, what kind of things emerge will be, I think it becomes an exciting opportunity as well as much as it's scary at this moment. Uh, and, and, and getting back to, to leaders of organizations, I mean, what a great time to ask yourself, okay, what kind of leader do I want to be going forward? And I don't necessarily have to be the same leader as I was before, because maybe that leader was great for the period up until this happened, but maybe it's a different kind of leader moving forward. And maybe I want to be a different kind of leader. Yeah, oh, completely. And I, I really do hope people have that question that they pose for themselves, because I think there's a lot of opportunity to for all of us to evolve as leaders, you know, and this is a perfect time to come out the other side of this and just take some different steps, you know, look at your own skills differently, you know, and trust others differently, engage differently. I think it's, um, there's a perfect time to be in a reset mode. It's certainly now. Yeah, and I think, and I think you'll find that that people generally want. I mean, they they're going to they're looking for leadership. They're mm -hmm. going to they're going to be looking for people to to be creative. They're going to want to help in any. I mean, so I think this is the this is going to be your greatest time to be able to harness all of the brain power within your organization. I agree. I absolutely agree. And so, what do you think becomes one of the main skill sets that people should be looking at as a leader? You know that you. That, that should start to surface when you come out of this. Yeah, I, I would say, I think, I think really, I, you hear a lot, okay, a buzzword about empowering people, but I think really empowering people and getting out of their way is connecting. One of the things, here's an interesting thing. One of the things that we found about running a virtual company is you can take out a lot of the, those layers of middle management and bureaucracy because you're kind of forced in a way to, connect people across your organization virtually and kind of say this is what i need and then go you guys go figure it out mm -hmm. right and so i think that is what is needed more and more and i think that's what uh, uh, one of the biggest changes is really 
sort of letting matrixing your organization and letting all the people connect who need to connect and kind of getting out of their way and be more be more focused on the results as opposed to the process and and just i think if if we took out middle management and bureaucracy i think it'd be a wonderful thing yeah, I think that's a great point that you make. And it, you know, it goes into also the really having strong communication and recognizing that yeah. the communication should be inclusive of other ideas. It's not just top down and really finding that consistency around um, including people into the idea generation and into, you know, into the impact that they can make. And I think that's often done in silos or done at the top yeah. of organizations and hopefully that really does start to shift and we start to see more of the letting go of that need of control and more of the inclusive yeah. nature and it's funny i think it's a it's a byproduct of virtual working too that uh, maybe some companies are discovering for the first time is that when you are when you are in a physical building and you're all together things tend to default to the the loudest and do most mm. dominant personalities when you move into a virtual environment, you actually, uh, it for some reason, I guess maybe it's the uh, the physical barrier of the technology, but you actually find that people who maybe were less inclined to speak up, speak up more, they're more confident. You actually get a much more, you get a broader cross section. We found sometimes the collaboration is so much more robust because you have people really contributing who maybe if you were sitting around a table in a room, maybe wouldn't. Oh my goodness, for sure. And the fact that, you know, for so many of us who didn't have that virtual world mm -hmm. to the degree we have it now, you know, the ability to have these conversations in the way that we're doing today, just it, there's more, um, there is more intensity. There's more desire to really be paying attention to really feel mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm hearing what you're saying. And I think that that can definitely be lost inside of what we had before right. when we could easily be distracted by things that um that we felt like were this next priority right and and this, yeah. is, this is this is really taking us to a whole nother level of forcing us to focus and to be more present in ways that um we just can't really avoid yeah. now exactly exactly and unlocking unlocking the ability of everybody so i think it's an i think uh, it's it's a tough thing that we're going through, and obviously our, our hearts go out to those people who've been directly uh, impacted by this, and you know who've lost loved ones. But with everything, when when things like this happen, it does give an opportunity for you to evolve and change, and I think that that's the good that comes out of it. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. All right, listen, Kim, this has been great. So uh, Kim's all of Kim's information will be in our contributor bio, so you can find out everything about Kim and. Uh, everything she has done and is doing. But before we go, please do share with people a little bit more about yourself. So I, you know, I'm so thrilled to be able to just share this, the, the conversation we've had, the thought leadership. Um, really, I'm focused on leading the operations for an organization called Waldron. And it's really a leadership development firm that really focuses on helping executives tackle the most toughest challenges and really the firm that brands go to when they're really in need of a lot of guidance and support. And so our work is really enriching in looking at helping organizations think very much about the conversation we're having, which is what does this next level of leadership need to look like to um, help businesses grow and be healthy? And so I'm excited to bring um, so much of my own business background and passion for people and business growth together inside this firm. And so I'm looking forward to sharing more. Yeah, that is great. And it's been a great conversation and best of luck with the with the new opportunity. Again, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.